Dot McKenzie in the Midnight Love Garden talking about Jesus. It must have been Jesus. Amen. Okay, y'all. So, some of y'all just nasty. <laughs> have you ever been in a place where where you um been with family members and maybe you need needed to borrow a pair of earrings or use some lipstick or use some deodorant? Ew, I can't stand stand that i can't stand that but i will tell y'all this you might want to listen up to what i have to say about it um according to shape.com www.shape.com you can always go there and check this out for yourself but here are 10 personal items you don't want to share Mm -mm. so let me get to it here we have slow connection in this area tonight for some reason. The devil is a lie, right? <laughs> okay, bar soap. Despite the persuasive attitude that a bar of soap somehow cleans itself, the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, recommends using liquid soap over a bar when possible to cut down on sharing. A 1988 study found that germy soap isn't likely to transfer bacteria, but a 2006 study refuted that idea, citing soap as a source of continuous reinfection in dental clinics. Outside Magazine reported it could be because bars of soap don't usually dry all the way between uses, especially on the bottom, leading to an accumulation of bacteria, fungi, and yeast that can be passed from person to person. You little nasties. Oh my goodness, y'all. Give me just a second. I said this internet trying to mess up. Okay, so hats and hair brushes and cones. Headwear is an obvious culprit when it comes to the spread of head lice, but so is making contact with sheets, pillows, or couch cushions that have recently been used by infesting infested person according to the cdc y'all and this here one i know doggone well y'all be doing this with some sisters and brothers and you probably do it with your children too but please stop because antiperspirant there are two types of sweat and one is smellier than the other i'm talking about onion <laughs> onions beyond onions well, we got scallions, onion scallions. Okay, so let me, let me get serious. Okay, there are two types of sweat, and one is smellier than the other. The odor comes from bacteria that break down the sweat on your skin. The odor, therefore, has certain antibacterial properties to stop the stink before it stops. Antiperspirants 
on the other hand, are only interested in decreasing perspiration. I mean, yeah, perspiration. So they don't contain the same germ killing powers. If you share a roll of own a sh wait a minute, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. I'm getting tongue tied. If you share a roll on antiperspirant, you could transfer germs, bacteria. Fungi and yeast from person to person. Stop sharing or switch to a spray. You can transfer skin cells and hair by sharing the ordered sticks, which plays to some people's lower threshold for the gross, but won't result in infection. You wouldn't share them at a salon, so don't share them with pals either. If cuticles are cut or pushed back too far or callous skin is removed, you could have little cuts in your skin. Perfect opening for bacteria, fungus, yeast, and viruses to be exchanged from tools that haven't been properly sanitized between users, according to the Today Show, hepatitis C, staph infections, and warts can all be spread through, guess what, fingernail files and clippers. Oh, did y'all hear that? Warts. Warts can be transferred from that. Oh, my goodness. Ugh. So y'all better think again. Y'all better start learning how to do y'all nails at home and your eyebrows and stuff at home. Be safe. <laughs> okay, makeup. Keep your mascara ones and lipstick tubes to yourself. If your friend who wants a who wants a swipe has an obvious infection like pink eye or a cold sore, but says that on a case by case bias, makeup may actually be safe to share. That's because most cosmetics have a number of preservatives on the label which are designed to kill bacteria and other growths in products made with water, therefore cutting down on infections. The next thing is razors. It probably goes without saying, but you should never share anything that could exchange blood. Avoid sharing anything that might have contact with blood, even if there's no apparent blood. Since shaving can result in tiny nicks in the skin, viruses and bacteria left behind on razors can enter swiftly into the blood according to my man, Dr. Oz. Blood transmitted viruses such as hepatitis B are unbelievably transmittable, says Tosh. And the next thing is drinks. Y'all know it. Oh, hold up. Y'all know, please stop giving these babies drinks. Did y'all see last month where the baby died of hepatitis? No, herpes, herpes simplex something because somebody kissed the baby. Listen, y'all are adults. Don't be kissing on babies. Don't be feeding babies out your mouth. They are so sensitive during their growing years, during their young years, even for teenagers. Sharing a water bottle or a cup can lead to saliva swapping and not in a good way. The germs that cause strep throat, colds, herpes, mono mumps, and even meningitis can all be exchanged with a seemingly harmless sip. Dennis Thomas P. Conley writes, however, Tosh points out that while many people carry the virus that causes cold sores, some won't ever actually have one. Should you never, should you never share a soda? He says, usually, usually it's not going to cause problems. But y'all listen, don't be sharing. Toothbrushes. Sharing is a no-no, according to the CDC. You could pass infections along to those. Oh, hold up. I'm trying to move this thing up. You can pass infections along on those bristles, bristles if there is any small amount of bacteria. Earrings. When you poke an earring through your ear, you may make a little break in the skin, allowing viruses from the last wearer to 
enter the blood according to the Dr. Oz show. Tosh points out that most people in certain earrings won't be drawing blood, but there is still potential risk if you don't clean your jewelry between wear wearers. Y'all, that is so true. Just don't share the earrings. <laughs> now, if you're going to share earrings, because I know women, we love to share earrings. If you're going to share them, clean them up. After each use, especially after each person uses them. Earphones. We know you love your jams, but frequent earphone use seems to up the amount of bacteria in your ears, according to a 2008 study. That bacteria could spread to another's ear if you share headphones and could lead to ear infections avoid sharing or at least wash them first which by the way you should probably do more frequently anyway even over over the ear headphones could pass a long life wow so y'all that was actually all of the 10 things that you should not be sharing y'all take this stuff to heat because this stuff be serious you get out here sharing these things and and you wonder why you're sick and you'll wake up with balls and warts and colds and herpes and all this stuff and you know this is stuff that people don't usually talk about but look i talk about it because i live around you know i live everyday life i'm not no rich woman i'm out here just like you are trying to survive and i think that knowledge is power knowledge is power y'all all right so we're gonna move along right on here in the midnight love garden with miss coco bowden y'all this next thing is by um charles walker it's actually instrumental and i want you to just relax your mind don't think about nothing because today is friday so relax your mind Leave all your worries and cares in the hands of the Lord. I want you to drop it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you bring in here, I want you to drop it and just listen to these um, instruments as they play. You're listening to UGA Gospel Storm Midnight Love Garden with Miss Coco Bowden. Gotta be strong. Mm-hmm. 